Ahoy there makers! Let's take a closer look at the Motor 2040. So this is one of my favourite boards right now. It's perfect for robots. So the Motor 2040 is a compact 4-channel Motor Plus encoder controller powered by the Raspberry Pi 2040 chip. It has an RGB LED and it also has per motor indicator LEDs so you can see which direction that the motor is travelling in and it also has built-in voltage and current sensing as well to protect your motors. The Motor 2040 is a standalone motor controller for driving motors with encoders attached. Encoder motors can provide feedback to the controller enabling concise control over the position and velocity and this is perfect for building four-wheel robots like I've got over the desk and I shall show you in a second with mechanum wheels. We built the RP2040 right into the Motor 2040 so you don't need any separate microcontrollers and driver boards keeping everything nice and tidy and really easy to mount on a robot. So let's have a look at some project ideas. It doesn't have to be a, a robot. You can use the Motor 2040 for lots of other things as well. So I want to suggest on here elaborate pulley systems or 1 to 12 replica of a It's a Small World or customised dials with haptic feedback and programmable endpoints. So the Motor 2040 comes with loads of bells and whistles such as an addressable RGB LED aka the NeoPixel and that means we can have all kinds of statuses depending on what colour or flashing patterns that we have on that. You've got a pair of indicator LEDs for each motor so you can see which direction that it's going in which really helps visualise your code and you can understand if it's doing what you expect it to do. It also has a Quest connector, the QWST connector, which makes it really easy to attach quick or stem QT breakouts. So some neat voltage, current and fault sensing features as well to help prevent motor mishaps. We don't want our motors burning out. And it's supported by a really well documented C++ and MicroPython motor encoder library. Really, really easy to use and very, very smart. So the Motor 2040 is also paired with some really cool things, which is the Micro Metal Motor Encoders, the MMME. So we designed these Motor 2040s to interface to our new MMME Micro Metal Motor Encoders modules, which are coming very soon. And you can upgrade your standard Micro Metal Motors into these fancy encoder ones as well. You can see on the back there, there's a little shim, and the shim also has a little hall sensor effect encoder wheel on the back. So it can detect very precisely how many rotations that motor has made. We'll also sell the uh, MMEs pre-attached so you can skip the soldering stage as well if you like. Once your motor has the MMME attached you can plug it straight into the Motor 2040 with a six pin JST SH cable and it's really really convenient. So I've got some of these over here and I can show you in a second what they look like. So some of the features, let's take a closer look at this. So it's powered by the RP2040, which is that dual core uh, ARM Cortex M0 Plus running at up to 133 MHz with 264K of RAM. We've also got two megs of flash on board as well. And it has two dual H-Bridge motor drivers, which is the DRV8833. And we've got four JST-SH connectors, which are six pin for attaching the motors. So they're labeled A, B, C, and D on the, uh, the Volta 2040. It's got onboard voltage and current monitoring. So you can monitor the current level, the voltage level on each of the motors. And it also has a fault sensing as well. We've also got the reset and boot button. And the boot button can also be repurposed as a user button as well, which is really cool. And it has the USB-C connector for programming and power three amps maximum on that. It also has the uh, Quest connector for connecting breakouts. Comes fully assembled so there's no soldering required. You've got the C++ and MicroPython libraries available on the website. You can also download a schematic, a, a mechanical drawing as well if you like. And you can drive the uh, motors between 2.7 volts and up to 10.8 volts. So the software to bring this to life. So because it's an RP2040 uh, board, the Motor 2040 is firmware agnostic. This means you can program it with your C, C++, MicroPython or CircuitPython. So our C++ MicroPython libraries will help you get the most out of your Motor 2040. They're packed with all the powerful features, all the batteries are included there. And if you want to get the best performance you're going to be using C++ for that. You've got all the speed that you get with C++. And if you're a beginner, we probably recommend that you use the batteries included MicroPython, which is really easy to get started with. And I use that as well. So you can also use CircuitPython, as we've mentioned, on your Motor 2040. You can access all the Adafruit ecosystem as well using that. So connecting the breakouts, connecting all the things. There's a couple of ways that you can do this. On the board itself there, you can see at the bottom, we have the, uh, all the headers are broken out there, the five pins that we're used to. Or you can use the Quest connector as well to connect things. And if you want to have an adapter, we also sell adapters, such as this little um, breakout garden connector, which is a 
quest to breakout garden and it has the quest connector on both ends there and that'll plug nicely into that quest connector at the bottom there so you can check the product page for all the different lists of breakout gardens that we currently offer and that are compatible with all our c plus plus and micropython libraries so some of the notes as well so there is a couple of traces that you can cut on the back of the, um, the board i'll give you a close for this in a second uh, and that's a couple of options there if you want to break the external power or the usb power so that you can provide additional voltage to your board. So if you cut the trace in the back, you'll need to provide separate power through the logic board, through USB or the five volts uh, on the broken out header. So the current limit of each motor can also be disabled by soldering the high current pads on the very back of the board there. There's like four little pads you can see. And the direction indicators as well, you can actually cut the trace on them as well. You can see there at the very top, you've got cut to disable the motor LEDs. And when programming a battery powered robot through USB, we recommend using something like a data only USB cable to avoid back powering the computer or the battery. So the motor 2040 also has some useful extra broken out headers to play with. So these are easier to see on the back of the board. If I just hold it up there, you can see we've got an external power on the left hand side there. We've got a couple of sensors um, on the bottom. We've got the breakout guard that we've looked at already. And there is also those four pins that you can see if I just rotate that around there, transmit and receive three volts and ground there. You can actually plug in a 3.3 volt range finder on that as well. Quite a few different um, connectors available to you on there as well. There's also the unpopulated screw terminals. There's two external um, pin connectors there, the external power, and you can solder in there your own screw terminal if you want to provide some additional power up to 10 amps max continuous current. So if you want to run the motors at a higher voltage than 5 volts you'll need to cut those separate USB and external trace on the back of the board to prevent the RP2040 being damaged by the increased voltage. So the RP2040 you should know all about this now is a microcontroller which is a dual core ARM Cortex N0 plus running 133 megahertz. It's the same chip that runs on the Raspberry Pi Pico. So one of the really exciting features about the RP2040 is programmable IO or PO, the state machines that we can program. And that means that we can offload some of the tasks that require high data transfer rates or precise timing that would traditionally have the CPU do that heavy lifting for us. And we can just offload that to the, the state machines themselves. So let's have a quick demo and see what we can do with this board. So on the overhead, let's go to the overhead camera here. So I have a couple of things I wanted to show you. So this is one of the motors with the, the encoder on the back. You can see the little encoder wheel there with those little circles. The gear at the front will actually spin slightly slower than the encoder at the back. And you can see there we've got the six pin cable connector, which will plug straight into one of the ports a, B, C or D on the motor 2040. That was one of the uh, connectors that I was just talking about before. So that's a breakout garden adapter. So we've got the quick on one end and we've got the breakout garden on the other. And you can pair that with things like I've got a five by five RGB LED matrix. And what I've also got in front of me here is a, a robot that I built specifically for this uh, motor 2040. This is the Rover and it's got the, the mechanism wheels and it has the motor encoders on there as well. So I've loaded up some code there, some test code. And what this will do is it will just run through a couple of different cycles of uh, movement. So if I plug in the power, it'll pretty much start all already. So it's going to spin around there and spin around back again. This is future editing, Kev. I've just realized, but when I've been doing these videos, Chris actually sent me a message saying, you've got those mechanism wheels on back to front. So on one side, I had the wheels the wrong way around, and that means that it doesn't work optimally. So I just want to show you that demo again with the overhead, just to show you just how good this actually can be if you get the wheels the right way around. So I'm just going to plug this back into the power. So it's going to go forwards. It's then going to go backwards. It's going to spin on the spot. That's much better. Look how precisely that is left and right orientation. And then it's going to make them left and right, strafe left and right. And it goes back to the exact same spot. So it spins around exactly 180 degrees and then strafes left and strafes right. You could put a set square on that. That's how accurate this is. So sorry for getting that wrong, Chris. Uh, I promised I would fix that. So we've got a couple of examples here that we can run through. So one of the nice ones to run through is the rainbow LED. So let me just remove this battery so we can actually see. So you can see there between B and C, we've got the RGB LED. It's cycling through a couple of different colors there. So it's blue color, we've got purple color, green, blue, purpley red, and so on. Let's try the encoder one. So if I run this, what this is now going to do, it's going to report in the terminal down here 
the movement of any of the, the motors. So if I just turn that wheel there, you can see motor D, which is what that's plugged into. If I now move this one, you'll see motor A, motor B, and motor C. So if we put that down there, we can sort of test out as we're moving it around and seeing all the different rotations. And it will count the individual rotations of that wheel. If I keep turning that round, you'll see that A number go higher and higher and higher. And then if I turn it the opposite direction, you'll see it go back down to zero. So that's the encoder program. Uh, we have an example of just a single motor. So I'm just going to double click this and run it. Just hold it up a second. So you can see there, we've got a couple of motors running. And you can also see there on A and B, the, the LEDs light up to show the actual direction of the motor. I'm just going to turn off the overhead light so we can see this a bit better. So you can see there the direction indicators also indicate which direction that the motors are spinning in. The code is actually cycling through a few different options so you can step the speed of the motors, we can gradually increase the speed of the motors or we can just switch them on and off at full speed. And the other one that I like to look at here which is the multiple motors one. This is a bit of a demo of how we can spin all the motors at the same time and they stop dead. That's what I like about this. They very accurate and then they'll slowly speed up and then slow back down again and the opposite direction. So if you want to know more about uh, mechanism wheels or how encoders work, I did a video about this recently on my own YouTube channel, which you can get to at youtube.com slash kevinmaclear28. And if you search out mechanism wheels and see that little thumbnail there, you'll get the video all about how mechanism wheels work and encoders as well. So I hope you enjoyed this short video on the Motor 2040 and I shall see you next time. Bye for now.